Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Table One. Thank you so much for tuning in. So we're going to be taking a look at Colorless Lugia. Yeah, this version of the deck is an adaptation of the second place list from the Yokohama Champions League tournament. We did have a little under a month ago. We are finally heading this weekend into Peoria Regionals, which finally feature 151 and Obsidian Flames which means this version of Lugia is probably something you can expect to see a lot. Yeah, single Strike, of course, has been the dominant variant, uh, 99 to 1 in terms of popularity. However, we are about to see a shift to at least 50-50, if not this one being the more dominant in the near future, I would expect. And why is that? Well, that's because of Snorlax. Yeah, Snorlax is a pretty powerful attacker. The Thumping Snore attack does 180 damage. It's a bulky Pokemon with the ability on face fat, so you cannot put damage counters on it with Sableye, other things like that. And with Therapeutic Energy, you can make sure that Snorlax does not stay asleep. Now, pretty cool attacker, like I said. You can almost turn this as a single, take this deck as a single prize attacking deck. And another asset to the deck is Luxray. I've seen a lot of people who are taking out the Luxray that you keep saying, well, I don't see a lot of use for it. I keep, I'm not finding the spots for it. Why is Luxray good? Because of Pidgeot EX. You, know? you fall behind, you bench the Luxray, you go boss, target under Pidgeot, cripple there, draw power, and set up uh, potential um, and searching capabilities for the rest of the game. That is a really powerful move. And of course, Mew EX. Mew EX is a card that really rounds out the deck with both its free retreat and its ability restart being good assets. However, genome hacking being the most important feature here. You can now copy Rain and Greninja, which is pretty great. You can also copy big attacks like Lost Zones, uh, like Lost Impact from Giratina V-Star. You can also copy late game a Charizard EX's, um, I forgot the name, the attack for up to 330, right, which is really, really powerful. And so Mew EX just seems like a really good card to include in a deck that features all colorless energy and therefore has energy to spare to power it up. Now, always be aware, though, that if you attach a double turbo to the Mew, you will be reducing your damage. So make sure you factor that in and try not to let that affect you at all. Outside of that, we have the exact same engine as other Lugia decks, except this time around we have four bosses orders as opposed to three. Those four boss orders let you catch on the crucial Pokemon for your opponent in a more decisive manner. You're more likely to have boss orders when you need it at the time you need it when you play the maximum count, right? Along with Luminia to search for it, along with all the um, cards to search for Luminia as well. So a lot of consistency, a lot of good in this deck. And with Gift Energy, you're always or almost always protected against Iono from your opponent. So let's jump into the ladder, see how the deck plays out and how it feels. For the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan Store for your online codes. 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab. Then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Cart Market and Dragon Shield. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyperbeam Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Otay. All right, so get to go first, which is great. As always, now, like I mentioned in the deck profile, well, <laughs> uh, starting Snorlax is a pretty decent start for the deck, as that does mean you have the possibility to make sure you can take a price card, even if you don't get to set up the Lugias. Yes. Now, in 151 format, I feel like there's very little justification to be using any sort of 60 HP Charmander. We somehow have triple <laughs> capturing Aroma. So, I mean, we're looking for some good results here. Like, even if we flip triple heads, that'd be fine. Triple tails, that would have been less fine. Um, double heads is pretty great. 
Now we're gonna continue to do the last uncertain card here. If it's heads, I'll search for Lugia V-Star. All right, triple heads. And then I'm gonna go ahead and ultra ball away the two Archeops, establish a Lugia, and then we're good to go, right? We are good to go. So now the main thing that I don't like about this hand, certainly, is the fact that I have my reversal energy right here. And I think against Charizard decks, this deck having the possibility to go behind in prizes and then go bench a Luxray, search for reversal, boss KO and Pidgeot is a really, really, really powerful strategy. So not a big fan of losing their reversal energy. Um, it does seem like I'm gonna be ahead in price cards right here. I mean, it also depends on my opponent's strong, st um, and it depends on my opponent's start. If it's decently strong, then that would be a play that I would have loved to make, but I will not be able to. If it's quite weak, as it seems like it's getting, or as it seems like it is, with only one Charmander, I'm okay eliminating the one Charmander that my opponent has for sure not doing much else they know i have the lugia v star in my hand they also saw me discard the tour gifts which that's only if they paid attention right which is something that i feel like a lot uh, there's a lot of players who are playing their cards but they're not very aware of what happens beyond their playmat or during their opponent's turn right and that's like you have these sort of uh players who uh, will not pay as much attention as i mentioned and so they will do a lot, like you have game on board, not even with your hand, yeah? You have game on board and then they do all, they take this really long turn as they are playing. You know you've already won, the play to win is already on board and yet they play and they do so many things, they finally attack you and then you go, okay, promote attack, GG, yeah? And some players just like to do it because they like playing. I feel like there's definitely uh, an important amount of, players who do it because they don't realize that the game is essentially over and so um, it's very important you know to really know exactly what your opponent can or cannot do during your turn you can get a lot of valuable information of the things that they did during a turn you can also get a lot of valuable information from the things that they didn't do during their turn right you're up against lost box they didn't play a call risk that turn they might have a 10, 11, 12 card hand, right? But they didn't play a Colrus and there was no reason for them not to play one. That probably means they didn't have one, right? So then even if you would Iono them down to five cards, for example, or six or however many, then you are getting them closer to the Colrus. I think that's a really good example of uh, really using your opponent's actions or inactions during their turn to really make use of that information and figure out exactly how to approach your turn. Now, still more Pokemon Go Charmander, only one Charmander getting benched. I'm definitely just gonna go Ultra Wall for Luminion as long as they are available in case I fail, in case I get my fourth heads in this game. Nope, all right. Actually a pretty good Tails result. I'm gonna keep the Ultra Ball in case I wanna go boss into Luminion again. Yeah. Looking pretty, pretty nice here. I did prize two bosses orders. <clears throat> so a decent chance I have one right here. And like I said, I'm not benching anything else. There's no need to do the Archeops. I'm not threatened in any way at all. Um, I don't need another attacker set up right now. Just because you can use the abilities doesn't mean you have to. And if my opponent benches another lone Charmander, then I'm gonna go Ultra Wall into Luminion, into Boss to knock out the Charmander as well. So we'll see. Does decide to go for Entei, however. And Entei is a Pokemon that I actually cannot KO. I don't mind KOing the Pidgey though. I two shot the ante. I two shot the ante. That's fine. So um, this deck definitely likes that, like that big, powerful attack. And a lot of the time, I have thought of how um, it could be important to have a copy of Weirder here. This is mainly based off the Japanese deck that got second place at the Yokohama Champions League tournament, which allowed Obsidian Flames and 151. So. 
they didn't have weirder the next best place in lugia list did have weirder so i don't know it's definitely one of the big cards that i think are like very clearly missing but also i'm not so sure how impactful they are they could be very impactful they could actually not be so we'll just have to see we do see the pass however so we do have the snorlax i would love to knock out the pitchy as well i feel like pinching another dominion feels like a little bit of a stretch but i mean then the ente attacks me and then i attack it and then what happens can't retreat into anything else though mm. now nah, i'll be a little more conservative i guess and i am going to power up this norlax and just have that ready to go if my opponent somehow is able to turn the game around that'd be very surprising honestly all right i'm going to attach gift and jet to the snorlax and then just attach the therapeutic and then i'll tank a hit with the lugia retreat into snorlax and we are good to go no need to play a collapse stadium just yet i could collapse here away the lugia with drop and aluminium though that probably has less value overall like there's not a big point to doing that and now we are very far ahead in the price race right so at this point if my opponent was able to set up a charizard um i'd still be completely fine i knock out the ente i'm down to the prices i go charizard ko the lugia i attack with snorlax i go boss attack and then take an archer prize and then i just attack the charizard again so that's like a worst case scenario and doesn't seem like my opponent's even going to be able to bench a Charmander here. So not the best draws for my opponent. Not the strongest start. Questionable cards in the list with Magma Basin and EXP share. Uh, I mean, they're both good cards, but they're not the most standard ones to be included in decks right now. And I quite simply top deck the Jet to bring the Lugia, take another knockout and no charizard in sight you know what i'm gonna prevent that from happening again just because drapion is a two price retreater and lumina is a single price retreater that's basically the only reason sure i'll discard the stadium now i open up myself the space for luminion boss ko however i fully expect to get one boss out of this there we go <clears throat> so i'm playing four and therefore I only had access to two in the deck, so that means two are priced. Now one is priced. Energy Recycler and another EXP share. So like I said, like Charizard's ability attaches three energies anywhere. You really do not need EXP share. And um, you have Magma Basin and you have Super Odd, which is strictly better than Energy Recycler in this deck. So it just doesn't feel great. You know? All right, I'm not going to care about the Charizard anymore. I'm just going to care about going boss KO, boss KO on the Pidgeot, if that's what happens. So we're just going to power the Snorlax. I reckon using up the Ultra Wall goes against the boss KO, but I am thinning the deck, and we are in an okay spot here. Let's attach the other double turbo. Have the Snorlax ready. We will be doing a good amount of damage here. And I could go boss KO the Charmander, but then that might mean that my opponent doesn't bench anything else and I have to win in two more turns despite the game basically being over. So I just want to get it over with. Usually the 100% correct and optimal play to prevent any shenanigans against would have been boss KO the Charmander, right? To be 100% safe. For time's sake... <laughs> Uh, that's, I just want to get this over with, so I just decided to go after the Pidgeot. Alright, quick search, into her candy, into the Charizard, powering up, right? Therefore, you don't need cards like Energy Cycler, or EXP Share, or Magma Basin. I mean, e Energy Cycler has merit, but Super Art is just strictly better, because you never need five energies back. But anyways, there's the retreat. There's a KO, my opponent will be happy, they took their two prizes, and then 
away we go with the game. I was also pretty immune to Iono since I did have the gift energy. And now I just have my boss's orders to finish off the game. My opponent selecting the prize cards, taking a ridiculous amount of time to do so. Hello? There we go. Thank you, friend. And yeah, boss KO. All right, so solid win. Um, the deck set up perfectly, of course. Apply pressure turn two, which is what you want. And this version does feel just a slightly teeny little bit more consistent than the single strike version. So on to the next match. All right, not such a pretty start here this time around. I could start with a free retreating Mew. I feel like that's usually best saved as a sort of surprise. Pokemon later on. Uh, Rotom V, that is a weird card you don't usually see. We do see a Battle VIP pass. I have no idea. What I'm up against, I just know this ability. They get to draw three cards and their ability, their turn ends. Oh, we see a Pidgey and a Ralts. I have a slight feeling that this is a stall deck. So, jeez, I might actually regret starting that Snorlax. Um, I mean, I do have two Therapeutic Energies. Which is nice. Capturing Aroma. Two Flip Tails. So I think I'm gonna bench the Lugia. I don't see a reason not to. I also have Jet Energy. Um, in case I need that. And what I'm wondering is if I should... I don't think I should ever bench Luminion in this spot. I feel like that would be a really bad. Because the Luminion can get trapped, right? And I, I don't have four Jet Energies. But... You'd imagine your opponent has more than four ways to get KOs of the sword, so we'll see. Yeah, we shall see. To see a Colris experiment. Yeah, I think we're up against <coughs> a sort of stall mill deck, right? Pidgeot finds some resources, Kirlia also draws them resources, and they're gonna try and lock something up with blocks Norlax, or maybe they just want to deny resources, which means I need to be very conservative. Or it could just be Tinkatov to do a lot of damage. Tinkaton, yeah, okay, never mind. Oh wow. Well, <laughs> completely misread this, um, which is okay. No, it's okay. They're not really threatening much if at all um i will certainly be more aggressive with my next turn however excuse me <laughs> i'm glad i muted my microphone for that i mean it could just be just draw a lot of cards with tinkaton and be a mill deck i'm actually not sure anymore I don't know if my opponents are trying to attack me or not. All I know is attacking this Rotom doesn't seem great overall. Because it just has so much HP. There's a Psychic Energy, however. <clears throat> so I don't threaten KO. Ooh, that path to the... Oh, wait. They discard the path to a big. Path to a big with Pidgeot is a very interesting combo. Um, all right, so I definitely want to take a KO here. I feel like boss KO the Feebas seems good. And then I go, and this is exactly what I was talking about, yeah? I am able to get KOs despite not having Lugia V-Star. I am able to apply a little bit of pressure despite not getting turned to double Arceops here. Um, there might have been merit to, yeah, attacking the Tinka Tink as well. Instead of the Feebas, maybe that would have been better, actually. <clears throat> now that I think about it, maybe that would have been better. But I feel like in the overall course of the game, 
uh, like IO knowing a way an opponent's hand is important. Not sure. I mean, I'm not sure, but there's a Tinkatani X, and that does 30 for each card in their hand. So they're definitely going to be able to go either the Snorlax or the Lugia. <clears throat> either or. And they're gonna thwart in a way. Oh my gosh, that is a card. <laughs> wow. All right. I mean, they could have done Thornton for the Tinka, Tinka, Tinka Tink, anyways. So completely misread that. Probably should have been more aggressive. Um, probably should have gone Luminion, Burnett, Jet Energy into a Lugia and read the wind, right? To have turn two Archeops and start doing stuff, but. That's out of the question now, so. All right, eight times three is 24. Can't attack their hand anymore, which sucks. Is there ever a world where Mew EX? I'm really surprised it went for a third turn play instead of just boss KO Lugia, but it is what it is. Shiny Arcana, they get two extra cards. Now I cannot attack their hand though, that's really awful. And I cannot deal 300 damage. And they're weak to metal, not dark. So I think I lose. <laughs> I am fairly certain that I lose here. Unless I go boss KO the Milotic again at some point. But I don't even think I'm going to do anything this turn. At least not anything of significance. Ooh. A head flip here would be so big. That's a huge top deck. Oh. Wow, if there's a Professor Burnett here. I do have Professor Burnett, okay. So we will be able to actually do our business, which is not bad. Um, is there ever a world where I copy an attack with Mew this turn? Probably not. <clears throat> Probably not. But, like, I am not getting back to back KOs, and they probably are. So, I might have to go boss KO Pidget next turn after my poor. Lugia goes down. Cause I'm definitely not taking a KO here. I guess I will bench the Mew. So I have the pivot for next turn and also to clear up my hand for the gift energy. I don't think I can win this though. I really don't think I can win this one. And I could attach one energy to the Mew. A therapeutic? No. I could attach a gift to the Mew. In case they try to go after that. <clears throat> and then we'll go Tempest Dive. Probably get rid of the Misagosa. I have my Locktray. I do need a boss, however. Getting that's not going to be easy. So 10 cards is exactly 280 damage. So if they get back to back Tinka tons and they just fill up their hand, I'm dead, right? I am super dead. So then do I need, I mean, I don't even have a boss right now. So <laughs> this is all dependent on me actually drawing. And I 100% read the early game wrong. I guess they had Thornton anyway, so they would have been able to attack me. Maybe in the grand scheme of things, I should always be going after the Tinka Tink. Regardless, because if they don't have Thornton, then they definitely can't attack, and I just get more information. But yeah, they are getting back to back one hit KOs, no matter what. And now they're getting ahead. So the only way this could work out for me is if they somehow whiff an attachment. 
And that's just not possible here. Or if they deck themselves out. So we have seen Thornton, we have seen Subrod. We haven't seen any switching cards yet. Maybe that's how I can pull this off. Yep, there's a 310. No bosses orders for me, however. Absolutely no bosses orders. All right, so next best thing would be using Snorlax to get a KO on this Tinkatoniax. That's not a Snorlax. That is most certainly not a Snorlax. All right. KO Pidgeot I don't think matters anymore. And it's a Tails anyways. So, what do we even do? Is there ever your one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Seven cards in my hand. So I need to somehow. All right, knocking out Pidgeot is out of the question now. I think I need to get 10 cards in my hand. Right, one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> I will be top six, seven, eight, nine. I'm one short. So I can return KO. How do I get an extra card? I don't think I can. I don't have any way to get extra cards into my hand. Right? There's nothing that gives me extra cards that is a plus draw. I'm always going to be one card off on their return KO. So like my only hope is that they don't have a think that they don't bench another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I top deck nine. I am one card off from copying their attack with Mew Yax. So I guess I should not have played any of the cards I got. I should have just gone in with the. I should have thought about it a little bit more. If I just, yeah, had taken it a little bit slower. But there's the other Tinka thingy. So that's that's game. Yeah, I have no way to win here. I generally have no way to win. Yeah. All right, not much you can do there. All right, we get to go first this time. We do Mulligan. And there's this Norlax, right? Which is, like I said, a threat, right? It's a potential attacker for turn two, even if you have turn two Lugia V-Star with double R Gibbs or not. That's one of the big deals here. Really need a Tails here. That's not what I wanted. So I'm gonna grab an Archeops. And then I will play down the Misagosa. I do seem to be up against our good friend Maraiden. Now I need a Heads Flip. All right, double Heads, we'll take it. As we do have the research. And since we do have two bench Pokemon, we cannot be escape roped into oblivion and then we have a guaranteed research of one Archeops maybe a second if we flip heads on Mesagosa so off to a decent ish start I could have grabbed the Lugia V star off the Mesagosa I mean off the capture and aroma and then if I flip heads then I grab the Lugia then I can brunette into the double Archeops but um, there was no certainty for the Mesagosa. So if the Mesagosa had been Tails, then I really would have preferred to go research away um, an Archeops into finding Lugia and an energy to attack and whatnot. So we'll see. Yeah, we shall see what happens. For now, we are out of range of a Raikou attack. I believe 2, 120. Oh, no, actually, we're not. <laughs> 
we are not thanks to that second bench Snorlax. However, I definitely need to bench the second Snorlax, otherwise my Lugia would be the one taking the KO. So I'd rather lose a Snorlax than a Lugia right here. Now, this is definitely problematic, right? And is most certainly a bad matchup. I do expect Maridon to be a very solid and powerful deck. If this version of Lugia is the one that ends up being played more, it's a, a very uh, straightforward and good answer to Lost Box decks. It has a better Guardian matchup, and in my perspective, better Lost Box matchup, better Giratina matchup as well. So... Obviously, those three are very important. Better Charizard matchup as well. So, all right. Already a double electric generator. I'm going to retreat before using Squawk and Seize. Even though that's a mistake, as I've mentioned. There's no reason to retreat before you tandem unit, before you Squawk and Seize. There's absolutely no reason to do that yeah preemptively retreating is a problem why didn't you play oh they had the squag and seas i was about to say why didn't you play the path to peak but they were going to squag and seas anyways don't retreat until it's the last thing you need to do right no reason like there's no difference if there's still a marip up front no no difference at all Well, <laughs> so, so much for protecting the Lugia. Found everything they needed. And yeah, I mean, this is a bad matchup, yeah? This is a bad matchup, and my opponent got this insanely ridiculous start where they've been able to do literally everything. So, it is what it is, yeah? I will be getting a return attack, 140, not the biggest, <laughs> ironic, not the biggest fan of using up another double turbo, but it is what it is, literally nothing I can do about it. I do get to bench two more Lugias in case they go boss again. I would not be surprised at all if they do, but I absolutely need to do this. Uh, benching the Luxray. I'm gonna hold off on that. Just 140 is fine. But I'm super far behind. Like, I cannot explain to you how far behind I am at this point. Alright, I did not wake up. That doesn't matter if my opponent attacks the Snorlax. That's fine. More likely, my opponent will try to go boss on the Lugia again. Right. <clears throat> I think that makes sense. Dyna motor, very impactful. No immediate boss yet, so this helps a little in the price trade. The issue is I have no way to like um, return KO without a lightning weak attacker. <laughs> That's the biggest problem right here. Does my opponent retreat the Raikou here? Oh, <laughs> they'll do one better. They will actually do one better. All right. The DOS put them in a slightly, slightly precarious situation where if I knock out this and then they don't have exactly a switching card to power up this Raikou, they are in trouble, right? But this is 100% not looking good at all. A hundred, a thousand percent. Lightning Rondo takes the KO. All right, so I'm gonna aggressively promote the Lugia, take the two prizes, and then hope for the best. I would love to be doing this with an Iono instead of a research, but it is what it is. Um, all right, just because I top deck the reversal, I'm gonna attach that, and then we'll go research and. Yeah, 
I have to play with one Archeops. I can't even power up the Lugia anymore. I can't get a KO. So that's it. Yeah. I do think this is a more powerful version of Lugia. We got the weird Tinkaton <laughs> matchup. Nothing you can do about that. And I completely misread what I was up against. And then um, Raiden is definitely a bad matchup. Yeah, Tinkaton is not something you will encounter at tournaments, but Raiden will definitely be. And that is a pretty difficult matchup. Nonetheless, we did beat that Charizard deck. Uh, Charizard set up, sets up, it's actually a pretty um, interesting back and forth. The Luxray play into boss KO uh, Pidgeot is actually a very significant one if you can pull it off. So keep that in mind. And yeah, thanks so much for tuning in. PCG Live Games, not the highest quality I know, but it's what we have and we'll keep trucking along. Thank you so much and until next time. Bye-bye.